So we have worked through polynomial division, both including long division and synthetic division. We did a few examples of the remainder theorem in the last video, and we're going to do a couple more examples of the remainder theorem here. Let's go ahead and review what the remainder theorem is. And it basically says, if you want to substitute a value into the polynomial, you can do that just the way that you're used to doing it, or you can do it by using synthetic division or long division, and the result is going to be the remainder. So let's go ahead and look at those examples that I talked about. We are given the polynomial h of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 2x squared plus 12x minus 15. A little bit larger polynomial than we've seen in the past, but that's no big deal. And again, we want to use the remainder theorem to determine if either one of these c values is a zero of the polynomial. So what we need to do is, is to set up synthetic division or long division if you prefer and divide by these values here. Now the reason that I wanted to include these examples is because notice that neither one of these C values is just your typical whole number. So I wanted to show you this to prove to you that synthetic division would actually be better in these two cases rather than just substituting these values into our X value. So I just wanted to emphasize that synthetic division and the remainder theorem works no matter what type of divisor that you have, whether it be a radical like in example one, whether it be an imaginary like in example two, whether it be a whole number like we saw in the last example, or it can even be a decimal or a fraction, which I didn't include any examples of. At this time, I suggest that you pause the video to see if you can determine if either one of these C values is a zero of the polynomial. So to figure out if they are a zero or not, we're going to set up our synthetic division and we're going to see whether our remainder comes out to be zero. I need to use my coefficients, but first I need to ask myself if I'm missing any terms and I am not, so I just use my coefficients that I see. 1, negative 4, 2, 12, and 15. Since it gives me the divisor here, I'm going to use exactly that number. Remember, if the problem gives you the factor rather than the divisor, then you need to use the zero of the factor, meaning set it equal to zero, and solve for the variable. So we have our divisor of root 3. Now let's work through the synthetic division. We bring down 1, we multiply, 1 times square root 3 gives me square root 3, and we need to add. But I cannot add these because these are not like terms. So I just need to copy down what I see, my whole number plus my radical. Now I need to multiply. So I have square root 3 times a negative 4 plus root 3. So if I distribute this through, this gives me negative 4 times square root 3 plus root 3 times root 3. Anytime you take a square root times itself, the square and the square root cancels out, and so we're just left with the number on the inside. Now let's pull that back up here, but I'm going to rewrite it in just the proper order. And so when I add 2 plus this here, 3 minus 4 root 3, I can only add like terms. 2 plus 3 gives me 5, and then I just copy down the radical part, minus 4 root 3. Now I need to start this synthetic division process over. I need to take square root 3 times a 5 minus 4 root 3. So when I distribute that through, I get 5 times square root 3 minus 4 square root 3 times square root 3 gives me 3. Or if I simplify this, this gives me 5 root 3 minus 12. So that's what I'm going to insert here, but in the correct order. Negative 12 plus 5 root 3. So when I add these, my whole number is 12, and negative 12 cancels out, and that leaves me with 5 root 3. Now I need to multiply. So root 3 times 5 root 3 gives me 5 times 3, or positive 15. So I pull that up here, and it looks like I forgot my negative, so this should have been a negative here. 
So negative 15 plus 15 gives me a remainder of 0. And that's what we want. If we wanted to figure out if it's a 0 of the polynomial or not, then we want a remainder of 0. So my final answer here is that square root 3 is a 0 of this polynomial. When I substitute that in for my h of x, it comes out to be 0. If we were to care about this in the graphing sense, we would note that square root 3 then would come out to be an x-intercept on our graph. Okay, let's move over to example 2. We're going to do the exact same thing, except for we know that our divisor is an imaginary number. So I set up my coefficients 1, negative 4, 2, 12, negative 15. I'm going to divide by 2 minus i. Bring down my 1, multiply 2 minus i, and when I add these, I can only add like terms. So negative 4 plus 2 gives me negative 2, and then minus i. Now I multiply them, 2 minus i times negative 2 minus i. I'm multiplying two binomials here, or a 2 by 2, so I have to FOIL this out. First, 2 times negative 2 gives me negative 4. Outside gives me a negative 2i. Inside gives me a positive 2i, so those cancel out. And negative i times negative i gives me a positive i squared. We know that i squared turns into negative 1, so this is negative 4 minus 1, or negative 5. So that's what I'm going to substitute in up there. Now when I add these, 2 minus 5 gives me negative 3, and then I need to multiply them. So let me do my scratch work down here. 2 minus i times negative 3. If I distribute this through, negative 3 times 2 gives me negative 6. And negative 3 times negative i gives me positive 3i. So that's what I'm going to put up here. So now I need to multiply these. 2 minus i times 6 plus 3i. First, 2 times 6 gives me 12. Outside gives me positive 6i. Inside gives me negative 6i. And last gives me a negative 3i squared. My 6i's cancel out. 12 minus 3i squared gives me a negative 1. So this gives me 12 plus 3, which is 15. When I substitute that up there and combine these, negative 15 plus 15, that gives me a remainder of 0. And that's what we want. We wanted to figure out if this is a 0 of the polynomial. Of course, if we end up with a remainder of 0, it is. So my answer here is 2 minus i is a 0 of the polynomial. So again, my purpose of these two examples were to show you that zeros of the polynomial can take any form, whole numbers, fractions, decimals, radicals, or imaginary numbers. And it might be easier to do the remainder theorem in synthetic division when you're doing more of the odd type of format, such as radicals in example one, or imaginaries, which is in example two. So this format might be easier than just substituting these numbers in for all of my x's that we saw in the original equation. All right, this finishes up the remainder theorem. In the next videos, we're going to be working over the factor theorem.